Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. If you've never been here before, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Gay, and I just do southern cooking and a little gardening and a little sewing and a little this, freeze drying, dehydrating, canning, just a little bit of everything that a woman that lives in the country would do. So I'm glad you're here. If you will, hit that button to subscribe and hit that little bell so you'll be notified when I put up a new video. I do three a week, and I try to do Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, but sometimes my internet interferes. So, but it'll get here sooner or later. And today happens to be Sunday at my house, and y'all won't see it on Sunday, but I'm gonna make a good lunch for us, and I really don't have recipes today. I'm just gonna bring y'all into the kitchen and let you watch me make our uh, Sunday dinner. So I've, I'm gonna do smothered fried chicken and some candied yam patties, purple whole peas, okra, and corn on the cob. And all of it is coming from my freezer. Now we didn't raise the chickens and kill them. And the corn, I bought at Kroger back last summer when they had it on eight ears for a dollar. I bought about the 40 years and shucked it and put it in the freezer. So that's what we're having the corn on the cob. But we raised the peas and I've had them in the freezer and the okra we raised and I blanched it and it's been in the freezer. So our, a lot of our meal today is stuff that I put up ahead of time so I could use when I got ready and today I'm ready. I'm gonna bring y'all over to the butcher block and show you what I do to smother my chicken and then we'll look at the rest of the stuff that I'm going to be cooking. Okay, some of my side dishes, one of them is going to be uh, these yam patties, and they're in the frozen food section, and this brand was Picked Sweet. And all I do, my sister-in-law in Florida fixed these for us when we first married, and I never have forgotten them. I loved them. And you just put your, I sprayed this with kitchen spray where it won't stick, Put your yam patties in. Put you some pats of butter. I put a little bit of uh, regular white sugar and then a generous amount of brown sugar. And I don't have measurements today. I'm just showing y'all what I'm cooking. But we're gonna have some candied yams and I'm gonna add a few pecans on the top because that's how Lita did it. Now, when I'm gonna cook chicken, I always try to marinate it or, what you know, I don't use a brine most of the time. I just use buttermilk. So I'm going to let this chicken set for a couple of hours, probably. It's already been setting for about an hour in the buttermilk. I really like to do it overnight in the icebox. But uh, then I'm going to uh, pat it a little bit dry, but I want some buttermilk left on it. And I'm going to brown it real good. And then I'm going to smother it, put a lid on the skillet and smother it. So we'll have smothered chicken today, and y'all see how I do that. But I was just going to carry you along. Now in the little pot on the stove, I've got some purple whole peas cooking. And what I did on them, I browned four or five slices of bacon. Uh, not real crisp, but just to render the fat. And I put my peas in and covered them with water. And I seasoned them with salt and black pepper. And of course, onion and garlic powder. And I'll show you those peas directly, but uh, Right now, this is what I've got going for a country dinner today. Okay, my yams are fixing to go in the June oven, and I've preheated it to 350, and I'm just going to let them cook. I still got to put the nuts on the top, but I'm just going to let them cook until they kind of candy, and this got gets caramelized, and um, I'll show y'all, and I'll tell you how long I left them in there. Normally, I would cook this okra in one of the pots, like maybe you can see my little red boiler over here, but I had fried some bacon in this skillet So I just used that flavoring so I put my boiled. This is okra that we grew and I had um, Blanched it and put it in the freezer. I had vacuum sealed it So I opened it up and I just put it in here with the bacon grease that was in there and covered it in water and put salt and pepper, onion and garlic powder. And I'll taste the juice after a while to see if it's flavored right. And if it's not, I will adjust it with whatever it needs. But this is not going to take long to cook because I blanched it before I put it in the freezer. So we're going to have the okra. And I've got purple hull peas. Let me see if I can get you over there. 
got purple whole peas cooking and then I've got corn on the cob in the one back here and this too now we didn't grow this corn let me tell you every year they put the corn on sale uh, like six or eight years for a dollar at Kroger and I stock up bring it home shuck it and uh, I don't blanch it I just put it I vacuum seal it and put it in the freezer and it'll keep two or three years vacuum sealed so I'm pulling from what I had bought and prepared to put in the freezer for my pantry for when I got ready for it. So anyway, I've got the yams in the June oven. My okra's cooking. All of this is cooking and I'll show you what else we're going to do. Hiding under this towel is my chicken that's been soaking in the buttermilk like I told y'all. And I've got my seasoning here. Now I'm going to, I've got about a cup of flour and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of garlic powder to that and stir it around in there because I'm going to put some on the chicken too but I like it to be on in the flour and that just bumps the flavor up a little bit. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of onion powder, a few crates of black pepper, and I always get questions about my pepper grinder. Um, my first ones I got was at Sir La Cobb. It looks like SirLaTable.com. I worked at the store. Um, and they go, they run out of them every once in a while. So when they ran out, I found some on QVC. But the last time I looked, they did have them again. So that's where I get it. And it's easier on these hands than doing the crank one. I got a big old nice wooden crank one. But it wears my hands out cranking it. So I'll um, stick with my little ratchet. Okay, I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt in that. And I've just got it on a paper plate that's easy cleanup. So I'm just going to try to blend this really well in here. Now, there's not going to be a recipe at the end for this concoction right here. So if y'all want to run it back and write down what I said, um, that's going to be your recipe. I'm just showing y'all how I do this, letting you come for Sunday dinner. I'm going to make a pan of cornbread too, because if you got purple whole peas, you need some cornbread. Okay, I think that's mixed up well enough. Now I'm going to get over here and drain this, and, um, I, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to test my oil with a little pinch of flour. It's not quite as hot as I want it to be yet. So I let it get a little bit hotter. And then I will uh, get my chicken in there. And I want it good and brown on each side. And then we'll Put that lid on there and smother it down. Sometimes I take it out and make a, a gravy and put it back in there and smother it in the gravy. But today I'm just going to smother the chicken and we're not going to have gravy. Turn that fire up just a little bit to get it hotter so it hurry up and get ready. My goodness. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, hear the sizzle. It's doing good. I'm going to dip this one in the flour one more time. Is it got some of its flour stuck to the plate. Okay, now you don't want to scooch it around a bunch and you don't want to be picking it up and peeping. If you start to pick it up when you think it's brown, if, if it's getting pretty brown, it'll turn loose. It won't be stuck to the bottom. But if it's not ready to turn nine times out of ten, you're going to leave a little bit of batter on the pan. So you have to be patient. Okay, it's time to flip it over. See, it's just a nice golden brown. Just 
and slash. And that one needs to go a little bit more because it was put in there later. So when it gets good and brown and I'll flip it over, I'll let them all cook just a little bit more where its underside will be dark too. And then I'll um, go ahead and put the lid on it and just let it smother down. What happens, condensation forms on this lid and it's a little bit of moisture in there and it's cooking at a, I'll put it down low and that chicken will just get so tender. So, <clears throat> I think I told y'all I'm using boneless, skinless thighs and boneless, skinless breast. Okay, they're all real good and brown on both sides except for this one piece of chicken breast. And I'm going to brown it for about another minute. And then I'm just going to cut my fire down and put the lid on it and just let it cook until it's tender. Put my big old spoon and I just tilted my skillet and I dipped off just about all of the grease that was in there. There's just a little bit left in it. So now I'm going to cut my fire down on low and I'll put the lid on it and just let it cook until it's good and tender. Okay y'all, my chicken is brown and this is a little browner than I wanted but my phone rang and um, I didn't get it taken up as quickly as I should have. Y'all heard me talk about a little lady named Granny Bowles taught me how to can. Well, it got to where she lived with her son and his wife forever. And it got to where every day the meal was kind of burnt. And J.W. finally said something to her about it. Her response it. was, it's that Lone Ranger's fault. He comes through here every day about 3 o'clock. Well, she was watching the Lone Ranger on TV. She was the cutest little old thing. But anyhow, the Lone Ranger didn't come through, but my April called me and I uh, should have just took it up while I was talking, but I wanted to show y'all what I was doing, and I've got a plate of good, tender chicken here. So I'm going to get a plate fixed and show y'all what our lunch is going to look like, and then we're going to sit down and eat. Okay, i got our plates dished up here, and I'm going to butter this corn, because you got to have butter on your corn. And I'm impatient. And so I'm not making cornbread. Okay. I think we have our lunch ready. We're going to sit down and eat and uh, Enjoy the rest I'm of so the evening. I'm so glad that you came in the kitchen to visit for a little while with me and watch me cook our lunch. And now you can kind of do the same thing I did and make you some lunch like this. I love chicken cooked like this because you get the taste of fried chicken, but it's not so hard and and crunchy, and which I like that too. Anyway, I'm thankful for the gift the Lord gave me today. I've had a pleasant day so far, so I'm going to have a good meal, and uh, I'm going to listen to it rain probably for the rest of the evening. That's peaceful, though. Y'all come back in a day or two. I'm going to do an update. Uh, the arrow garden has sprouted, and I've got leaves on all of the little plants, and I'm going to show y'all that um, in a day or two, and I've got some good recipes coming up. The good Lord bless and keep y'all, and I'll see you again shortly.